Well, I think you hit a, a great chord as you've given evidence to. I know my guttural response to Limbo was quite a bit more positive than mine was to Live Sequel just by reading the announcement post. I'm like, okay, this makes a lot of sense. And then I realized later, oh, it's the same people that tried Live Sequel yeah. a couple of years back. And it seems like with a rewrite, there's just so much more to do. There's, there's, it has its own identity. There's mm -hmm. new, there's fresh and new ideas. And whereas a fork almost comes from a different place. And so I think exactly, you're, yeah. you're absolutely describing it on the testing front though. I would imagine it's gotta be just as hard or maybe I would expect it to be harder with a rewrite. Why, what makes it easier with a rewrite than with a fork if you still don't have a test suite? Your, your intuition is correct, by the way, which, which is one of the things that all things consider we went with the fork, because at least like, a, you know, there, there, there is some level, there's some level of guardrails that come with the fact that at least you know that this code that you're importing was tested by this proprietary test. It started off right. Right. Yeah. So, so it, 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 I don't think your intuition is incorrect, but uh, one, it, something amazing happened. And, and by the way, the way I look into the situation Another thing that I want to make it clear, I don't actually think that we made a mistake uh, with the fork because if we were rewriting back then, there were many decisions that we made today that we would not have made, but now we did because we have the we had the experience. We've been running the Turso platform and we learn a lot of things. So 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 it actually allow. It, it, I almost see it as a prototype, and it actually allows us to to make tremendously good decisions with with the Limbo project. Uh, and one of them is exactly the testing. Uh, what happened is that. Becca and I got hooked uh, into something called deterministic simulation testing. And deterministic simulation testing is a very niche thing that most people have never heard about. Uh, I had heard about it like a couple of times, but I didn't truly quite understand what it was until I met Yoran. So Yoran is the founder of, and I can say this, I mean, even though I am the founder of a database company, Yoran is the founder of the most amazing uh, database company I've ever seen, although now I think with Limbo, we have a chance to reclaim that title. Yoran and I are going <laughs> to fight about it. But, you know, ask me a month ago, I would say, man, I, I have to give it to him. This is the most impressive database company of all, Tiger Beetle. Tiger Beetle is a database, just to keep it very brief, that is designed for financial transactions. So it's completely written in Zig, uh, and, and their goal is to replace entire systems the best bulk systems that most financial institutions have to process transactions, right? So if you're selling to banks or in, in financial institutions, if you if your goal is to like replace the backbone of world's commerce, it's it's pretty hard to do, right? And and one of the challenges that you have is just this: like, how do we trust this thing? Uh, and your unfound the solution for that. The solution that your unfound was to write Tiger Beetle entirely. Uh, entirely with something with a technique called deterministic simulation testing. Deterministic simulation testing is essentially a fuzzer. So it, it, it will generate a bunch of inputs. It, it randomly generates as many inputs as it can on, on the space of possible inputs. Uh, and, then, and this is the disadvantage. You kind of have to write software in a special way to, to lend itself to deterministic simulation testing. It's very hard to bolt it to an existing code base. Right, but you write it in a way that every single operation that you do on I/O, on you know, thread scheduling, everything that happens, goes through a special uh, uh, interface that abstracts all I/O, and then you plug a simulator uh, when, when you're testing this. You plug this into a simulator, and the simulator is included in the code base. So what the simulator does is that it's going to explore the space of possibilities, create the the most arcane, impossible situations ever. And then when something breaks, uh, it gives you the exact steps deterministically that everything in the system had up until that point. So debugging those problems become very easy. So in record time, in record time, Tiger Beetle managed to create a system based on deterministic simulation testing, which is their database, right? And the stories that Yoran would, would tell is like, look, we found this bug that would only happen if a uh, you would call F-Sync on a disk. Uh, and then F-Sync would return an incorrect result. Uh, and at the same time, a packet would come from the network. I mean, he would describe like the this, this most complicated scenarios. Oh, and then it, and, and the end result of that, the simulator gives you a seed and you type that seed into the simulator. Now you have every single step that happens to make that happen, right? So when we, this is one of the things that, that led us to believe, what if we try the rewrite? Because we knew that we could now try the rewrite using deterministic simulation testing. Uh, and then we also partner with a company called Antithesis that offers like a, a 
almost like the, the integration test analogy for deterministic simulation testing, which is a full system version of that, that will simulate like things between machines. It will simulate the network. It will simulate like hardware failures and, and stuff like that. Uh, so whatever bugs, whatever bugs our simulator does not catch, uh, usually we just, you, you, you give it to antithesis the next day, antithesis catches the bug. Uh, so we, we, we knew that with that, with, that was the missing part of the puzzle. And then with that, uh, we would be able to actually create something that probably even surpasses the level of testing the SQLite has. But here's the catch. It is easier to do this on the rewrite because you have to write the system with this in mind from the get go. It's not something that is easy to bolt upon, right? Huh. Is that popular enough that you can go out and there's, you know, Rust crates that will give you this functionality? You have to write all this DST stuff yourself? All of the, yeah. So uh, for for people who are interested in DST, uh, but don't want to go through the pains of just rewriting all sorts of things like that, I truly recommend taking a look at Antithesis because, I mean, Antithesis is, is amazing. It's the second you know, it's not just the second next best thing. We use it in conjunction. It's not an either or. The analogy that I have is that our own DST is like unit tests. Like we can run s centuries of, of possibilities in, in, in two days. Uh, and it's very fast, all things considered. And antithesis is like integration tests. Right? So, so you want to you wanna have both. And we, do, and we do have both. And antithesis has been a great partner for us. Uh, but the, prob the problem with deterministic simulation testing is that once you once you start importing other crates in Rust, for example, you have no idea what those crates are doing. They're, they're, those crates are calling I/O. So we even like uh, you kind of have to write everything. So it's not even that you have a crate for deterministic simulation testing. Is that like you might not even want to import like something super simple, one hundred percent, but you don't want to import anything that does I/O that, that has a timer. You know, you 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 want to write those things. So it's something very hard to do for a general purpose testing. For a database like Tiger Beetle, for a database like Limbo, it you know it's worth it, and and the scope is quite limited, right? And and you, you don't want to be importing crates all the time anyway. Uh, you know, Tiger Beetle is way more uh, insane than, than than we are. I mean, they have a policy that they just don't have dependencies. That's it. They write every single piece of code. That we we try to be a little bit more flexible, uh, but we 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 will not import a a crate uh, that. And and again, it, it also depends because SQLite comes with a CLI. Right. If you want to import a crate that does whatever crazy stuff to implement callers in the CLI, you know, that's fine. But, but, for, but for the core of the database, like we try not to import anything that could potentially do I.O. because we want to make sure that everything goes through the, the, the simulator. Um, 